What's up guys, Ozzy here. And a week and a half after uploading my unboxing video of the product, I finally have the Athlon X4950 review and comparison finished and uploaded. And I'm sorry that it took a long time, but in the time that I uploaded that unboxing video, tons of Athlon X4950 reviews and videos and benchmarks have been uploaded to YouTube. So you probably have a decent idea of how this chip performs, but this is my take on it. So without any further ado, Let's jump into the review and comparison. So the Athlon X4950 is a four core, four threaded excavator CPU on the 28 nanometer node. It is not based on the Zen architecture, contrary to some belief, but it's an iteration of the bulldozer core. This means that you shouldn't expect rising performance from the CPU, but I'll get into that later. It has a 3.5 gigahertz base clock, a 3.8 gigahertz turbo clock, two megabytes of L2 cache, and no L3 cache. AMD claims that it's not unlocked, but it definitely had an unlocked multiplier in the BIOS, meaning that it is overclockable through the multiplier. It has a 65 watt TDP and supports DDR4 memory clocked at 2400 megahertz. It comes with AMD silent cooler that they've packaged with Athlon since the 800 series. It cools things adequately and can be used for a light overclock. These specifications are not really anything new since AMD has been using Athlon processors as budget processors since the Phantom 2 days, so having them cut down like this is not really surprising. Now the lack of L3 cache kind of sucks, but again, it's pretty much expected at this point. Other than that, the biggest downfall I would say of the Athlon series on the AM4 platform is their lack of high memory speed support. Athlons and AMD APUs are known to have have some kind of noticeable performance uplift when they are paired with faster memory in dual channel. With a maximum supported speed of 2400 and minimal memory frequency overclock options, you are hindered on how far you can push your RAM kit. You can increase the front side bus, but that allows for greater instability. Now I couldn't post with memory clocked at 2400 unless I loosen the timings. Unfortunately, the memory clocked at 2133 with tighter timings perform 2 to 3% better consistently, meaning that memory clocked at 2400 megahertz was kind of pointless for me, which sucks. This also means that memory timings could play a significant role with the Athlon uh, APUs and CPUs, so that's something that I will test in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. Because of instability and performance, I kept the memory clocked at 2133 with timings at 15, 15, 15, and 36. I will play around with the timings and the memory speed later on when I have a little bit more time, but for now, this is basically the best I could do. I was able to overclock the Athlon to 4.0 gigahertz at 1.54 volts on the stock cooler with doable temperatures. Unfortunately, there was no information online as to what the maximum safe operating temperature of the AM4 Athlons were, so I tried to keep the temperature under 80 degrees Celsius. With an ambient room temperature of about 21 to 22 degrees Celsius, which is about 69 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, the overclocked Athlon reached about 77 degrees Celsius in Cinebench R15 using the application core temp and 70 degrees Celsius according to my motherboard, the Asus B350 Prime Plus's sensors. Without overclocking at stock, it was maxed at about 54 degrees Celsius in Cinebench R15 um, according to core temp and about 47 degrees Celsius according to my motherboard. Now that big change in temperature is mostly due to the fact that I had to increase the voltage a lot just to get to around 4.0 gigahertz. At 3.9, I was around 1.36 volts, but to get to 4.0, I had to push the voltage to like 1.43, 1.44, just to get it to post, and then 1.45 to keep it stable. Although this is a review of the Athlon series CPU, it is also a small comparison with the Pentium G4560 and the G4600, which are essentially the same chip. Um, I have the G4600 on me, but it's only 100 megahertz faster than the G4560, so you're looking at the same performance, and the Ryzen 3 1200. Now you can technically group all of these CPUs together as budget processors, and that's why I'm comparing all of them and also because it was requested a lot by you guys. But the test benches for all of them are almost identical, but there are a few differences that could play a part. All the test benches include the GTX 1060 6GB and 16GB of DDR4 memory in dual channel. I have the Athlon X4950 at stock and overclocked, the Ryzen 3 at stock and overclocked, and the G4600 just at stock because it is not an unlocked CPU. The difference between the three is their RAM speed. Like I mentioned, the 950 is running RAM clocked at 2133 at stock and when overclocked. The Ryzen 3 uses memory clocked at 2666 at stock and that's the fastest 
Bluetooth memory it supports without overclocking, which is why I used it, and 3200 megahertz memory when the Ryzen 3 is overclocked. The G4600 only supports memory clocked at 2400, so that's the speed that I used for it. I benchmarked applications that people would most likely use to try to make this as realistic as possible. Cinebench R15 is the only benchmark only application that I have in my benchmarking system, and that's because I needed something to gauge multi-threaded performance and single-threaded performance. Likewise, I benchmarked very popular games that you are more than likely to play on a gaming computer, and it ranges from eSport titles such as CSGO all the way to heavy AAA titles such as Witcher 3. So you have a good mix of games in here, and since they're very popular, I think that's a very realistic way to gauge gaming performance in 2017. Without any further ado, here are the CPU and the gaming benchmarks. Based on my data, at 1080p, the Athlon X4950 is about 60% slower than the Ryzen 3 at stock and about half the performance uh, once the Ryzen 3 chip is overclocked. Similarly, it's about 50% slower than the Pentium G4600. Now you can overclock the Athlon and it does help a little bit, but it doesn't bridge the gap. It's not a very noticeable difference, about 10-12% to 12 on average. Now this is slower than I expected, but I'm not entirely surprised. Considering an R3-1200 performs 55% better than an Athlon 950 in Cinebench's single-threaded benchmark at stock and when both are overclocked and can utilize faster memory and has L3 cache enabled and quite a lot of it, it's not entirely shocking that the Ryzen chip and the Pentium are much faster than the Athlon. The 1% lows show the greatest disparity between the Athlon and the two other processors. Take Witcher 3 for example, a heavier title but it works well if you have at least a quad-core CPU. On the Athlon X4950 you get way more hitching and stuttering than you do with the Ryzen 3 1200, and the 1200 isn't overclocked. 
There are some games that make me question how well supported the Athon is on the AM4 platform. In CSGO, for example, I expected the Athon to at least average 100 FPS or greater, and it couldn't stay above 60 if you look at the 1% lows. That seems kind of odd to me. I used the latest BIOS for my motherboard, I used the latest update for Windows 10, and there was no throttling even when overclocked on the stock cooler, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on. It's either the CPU is just that slow and it can't push 100 FPS in CSGO, or there's some unresolved issue that maybe a patch would fix. I'm not entirely sure. The CPU bottleneck is very obvious on the Athlon X4950 with a GTX 1060. That's not a question, but I wonder how much disparity an Athlon and other CPUs would have with a weaker video card. I'd imagine that they would be within 20% of one another if I benchmarked the chips again with the GTX 1050 for instance, instead of the more powerful 1060. Nonetheless, even if the performance isn't the best, the price to performance is arguably the most important metric uh, when comparing budget components. Unfortunately, even the price to performance with a GTX 1060 is not the best for the Athlon. It's worse than the G4560 and 4600 as well as the Ryzen 3 on average, and only ties the Ryzen 3 at stock. Keep in mind that these are platform prices, so I took the motherboard price into account as well, since that only makes sense if we are comparing two different platforms. Despite its pretty bad price to performance with a GTX 1060, uh, the $60 price isn't that bad for a quad-core CPU. It's also on a platform that's expected to be supported until 2020 at the very least. You can upgrade it to better Ryzen processors in the future, and it supports DDR4 memory. So there are positives to a purchase of an Athlon X4950. So my recommendation is basically this, and this is going off a few assumptions. Assuming that you won't be bottlenecked too heavy with a GTX 1050 or possibly a 1050 Ti, and your budget is centered around that uh, segment of video cards and those prices, then I think the X4950 is a decent purchase for you. If you're outside of that realm, meaning that you're going to go for a GTX 1060 or an RX 470 or 570, then I recommend spending the extra 20 bucks or so to get at least a G4560 or a G4600. That's basically it. The Athlon X4950, in all honesty, is a bad processor if you're going to pair it with a higher mid-range card like the RX 480, 580, GTX 1060. 60 or even an RX 470 or 570. Outside of that realm, then it can be a pretty decent purchase. The main reason why I'm really recommending the CPU at all, in all honesty, is because of the AM4 platform and its great upgradability. Uh, Ryzen is really the saving grace for the CPU. If you couldn't upgrade to Ryzen, then it wouldn't be worth it at all. Now I will test the Athlon X4950 a little bit more in the future. Like I mentioned, I do want to do some more RAM testing and I will test it with a cheaper uh, budget video card such as a 1050 just so you guys get a better idea of what you would be getting if you're in the market for a computer around 500 bucks or so. But that's basically it for this video guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and thank you for waiting for this video. I know it took me quite a long time to get it out but I'm glad that it's finally out and you guys are finally watching it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you liked it, then leave a like. And if you loved it, share and subscribe and all of that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.